600 interviews. The play you're about to see is edited from those interviews. Good place to live. Good 
become Waco. He's become Oklahoma City. We're now a definition. A sign. We may be able to get rid of that, but it sure is going to take a while.
We are going to stand back and wait to see which way the wind is blowing. And then I heard me immensely. We are supposed to stand out as leaders. I thought, what is going on here? God has set boundaries. And one of our responsibilities is to learn what it is that God wants. So, you study scripture, you look to your leaders, then you know what the bounds are. Now, once they know what the bounds are, then you sort of get a feel for what's out of the bounds. There is a proclamation released on the bed. A family is defined as one man and one woman and children. That's the family. That is clear as you can be. There's no sexual deviation or permissiveness in the Mormon church. No. <laughs> we just think that out of the bounds. The Bible will be your guide. If it is, it's all it is. The Christian pastors, many of the conservative ones, were silent on the shepherd king. Conservative Christians use the Bible to show the world, it says to you read the Bible. And most people believe, and they do, that the Bible is the word of God. And how are you going to fight that? I am a bigot, which means the Bible is true. The Bible doesn't need us to be true. The Bible is true whether we believe it or not. I arrived in Laramie, September 15th. I looked around. Tumbleweed, the men factory, and I thought, what the hell am I doing in Wyoming? Three weeks later, I found out what the hell I'm doing in Wyoming. <laughs>
has the first to fill out any presidential world. And that's all I own is the equality phase. So, what about the magnetic shepherds in here? We have carried over that night. One of your 30 people there, Matthew Shepherd, came in, sits right there. Just hang out. I mean, if you want to talk to somebody, you should talk to uh, Matt Galloway. He was the kid that was bartending that night. Didn't have to be him. Hey, the Galloway bartender tonight. Okay, I'm going to make this free. But it'll be everything. Just the best. 10 o'clock, I clock in. <coughs> usual time, Tuesday night. 10 30, Matthew Shepherd shows up. Alone. Sits down, orders a night. And I know that it's 10 30. So I have an inner time. Talking about standing, you can basically gauge a half hour. So, what can I tell you about the man? If you had a hundred customers like him, it'd be the most perfect bar I've ever been in. Nothing to do with sexual orientation, manners, politeness, intelligence. Taking care of me is stiff. Dress nice, clean cut. So he's sitting there. Didn't seem to have any worries, but he was looking for anyone. Enjoyed drifting the company around. Then, approximately 11.30, 11.45, Eric McKinney and Russell Henderson come in. I didn't know their names then, but they're the accused. They walk in just very stone-faced, you know, dirty, grungy, rude, skinny, that type of thing. They walk up to the bar and pay for a pitcher of beer with dimes and quarters. <laughs> Something you don't forget. Don't forget five, fifty, ninety, forty. <laughs> Freaking night. <laughs> now, Henderson and McKinney, when these guys come in, these really? guys got to be watched, but they weren't. They didn't seem intoxicated at all. <laughs> they just came in, walked up to the bar, got a pitcher of beer, and went back to the pool room with them. Next thing I know, probably a half hour later, they're just kind of walking around. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm not going to ask them if they want another one, because obviously they just paid for a pension with dimes and quarters. I have a real good feeling they don't have any more money. Remain Patterson, friend of Matthew Shepard. You see, money meant nothing to Matt, because he came from a lot of it. And he would hand over his wallet in two seconds, because money meant nothing. They can say it was a robbery, but I don't buy it. Even an iota of a second. Then, a few moments later, I looked over at Aaron and Russell were talking to Matthew Shepard. Aaron said, Did a guy walk up to her? I said he was gay. Did anyone get with Aaron Russell? Kristen Price, girlfriend of Aaron McKinney. And, did they got aggravated with him? They told him that they were straight. They didn't want to have anything to do with them. And they walked off. They stated that he approached them. That Matt came on to them. Absolutely, positively, simply to refute that statement 100%. And I'll give you two reasons why. One, why would he approach these guys? He wasn't approached anybody else in the bar. They say he's gay. He's a flaming gay. He's going to come on to people like that? Bullshit! He wasn't coming on to anybody else in the bar. Why did he say that? Anybody else? Obviously, rude. He came on to them? I don't believe it. Two, territory. That's the word I'm going to use for this. And that's the fact that Matt was sitting there. Aaron and Russell were in the pool area. Upon their first interaction, they were in Matt's area, in the area that Matt had been seen all night. So, who approached who? Well, you see, Matthew was that kind of person. He would never not talk to someone for any reason. If someone started talking to him, he'd be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> he had no problem just breaking up a conversation with anybody. And he did feel lonely a lot of times. Knowing that, 
I saw two individuals leave with men. I didn't see their faces, but I saw the back of their heads. At the same time, Aaron and Russell were no longer around. You do the math. Actually, I think the DJ was the last person to see him on his way out. Gave him a cigarette or something to make a shadow. I was the last person to find a mask before he left the fireside. I was just bullshitting on and that little tea sauce. Well, I saw him actually. And I was like, hey man, get ready to eat? He's like, yeah man, it's this and that. But then I noticed the two guys, and you see they were standing outside, they were standing all oh, right about there. And Matt was looking at them, and they were looking back at them. And so I talked to Matt for a good 10 minutes or so. I think he had a whip of like getting like worried, you know, anxious to leave. When they left, that's when I saw it. It was a small truck. It was a flat truck. And the three of them in the front seat, and Matt sat in the middle. And I didn't think that's about it, you know. I didn't think those guys were going to be like, that
Because there's no way I was going to go that way. So I'm in the deep thing. And I want to turn around.
Aaron McKinney was brought in by his girlfriend. Now I guess he's got to go fight later on that night back in town. So there I am, working on Aaron. The ambulance gets there with Matthew. So at this point, I don't know that there's a connection at all. So I tell Aaron to wait, and I go to see Matthew. And now, you have Aaron in one room of the ER, and Matthew in another room, two doors down. Now when Matthew came, it was obvious that his care was well beyond our capability. So I called the neurosurgeon in Potter Valley, and he was on the road in an hour and 15 minutes. I saw a picture. Days later, they showed me a picture of Matthew. I would have never read it. Two days later, I thought about what the connection was. And, and I was very struck. I mean, there were only two kids. They were both a couple of kids, and they were both my patients. Treated both of them, both their bodies, for a brief moment. I wonder if this is how God feels. He looks down at us. And we're all his kids. Our bodies, our souls. I felt a great deal of compassion. For both of Well, the news reports started trickling out on Thursday, but no names were mentioned. The brutality of the crime was not mentioned. All that was mentioned was that there was a man, a Larry man, stopping on the curb. Later on that evening, they mentioned
you know? I mean, basically what it boils down to is, if they don't tell you they're a fag, you won't beat the crap out of them. I mean, what's so great about that? That's a great philosophy.
He was driving down the road, and he should have been driving. And children, it was just a little piece, and we lost both our guys. You know, my husband worked with him. This man was brand new on the force. But I mean, here's one of ours, and it's just a little piece in the paper. Everybody's got problems. But why they exemplify Matthew Shepard, I don't know. A hate crime is a hate crime. If you murder someone, you hate them. It has nothing to do with if you're gay or a prostitute or whatever. has served us well. Do you realize this? He has served us well. I can't think of anybody who has done more for this community. I was very vocal when this happened, and I thought, should we, should we call the bishop and ask his permission to do the vigil? And I was like, hell no! I'm not going to do that! His permission doesn't make it correct, you know? And I'm not knocking bishops or whatever. But what is correct is correct. You people are just out here on a search, though. And I will do this interview because I think I will trust that if you write a play of this, that you sing it right, that you sing it correctly, I think you have a responsibility. Don't make matters worse. You think violence is what they did to that. They did do violence. But you know, anytime someone is called a fag or a dyke, do you realize that that is violence? That is the seed of violence. And I would present it immensely if you use anything I said to somehow cultivate that kind of violence, even in its small form. I would present it immensely. You need to notice that. Just feel what is true. You know what is true. You need to do your best to say it Thank you, Reverend. I appreciate your speaking with me. Good 
And that's where these people were. And this park was full. Liturgy today is an Easter liturgy. It finds its meaning in the right direction. The service invites the full participation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. And I guess it was like the worst storm that they've had, Romaine Patterson, that anybody could ever tell. Like trees were falling down, and the power went out for a couple of days because of it. And I just started thinking, it's like the forces of the universe at work, you know? Whatever higher spirit blows storms, it's definitely blowing this storm. For our brother Matthew, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection, and I am life. Pray to the Lord. Lord, you who consoled Martha and Mary. My most striking memory from the funeral was Tiffany Edwards, reporter, seeing the Reverend Fred Phelps from Kansas, the defrocked minister, with his own website entitled GodHateFags.com. Do you believe in the Bible? Do you believe that you're supposed to separate the flesh from the Bible? You don't believe in that part of the Bible. You stand there ignorant of the fact that the Bible, for every two verses, it talks of God's love. It talks of God's hate. A bunch of high school kids who got out early came over and started yelling at some of these people in the protest, the Fred Phelps people. And across the street, you had people lining up at the funeral. Well, I remember. I remember a kid coming over, and he was dressed in leather and spikes everywhere. And he came over from across the street with a protest bus. And he came into the crowd, and he had green spiked hair. And I just remember thinking, oh, this is going to be a really ugly conversation. But instead, he came over and he started talking. Another murder the state was going to do. The state does hundreds of murders every year. But this murder is different because the gay is trying to make Matthew Shepard into a poster boy for the gay gay lifestyle. And we are going to answer for it. It's just that simple. Six months later, they come here to turn to Larry for the trial of Russell Henry. You don't like the attitude of God. But so would remain patterned. That perfect attitude of God. We love that attitude of God. And we are going to preach God's hatred is pure. It's a determination. It's a determination that he's going to send some people to hell. That's God's hatred. After seeing Phelps protesting at Matthew's funeral and finding out that he was going to Larry for the trial of Russell Henderson, well, I
correct. Yeah. If you plead guilty today, you will be admitting all the essential facts of the charges. The only issue at that point would be sentencing. You understand that? Yeah. You understand, Mr. Henderson, that the recommended sentencing here is two life sentences. Yeah. I will ask you now how you wish to plead. Guilty or not guilty. Yeah. The only issue that this court has to determine is whether the two life sentences shall run concurrently or consecutively, that is, together or one after another. Before sentencing, I will hear from the family. This is an excerpt from a statement made to the court by the police officer. As the grandmother and the person who raised Russell, along with my family, we have prepared the following statement.
Catholic Church. And we're still going to have people hold the old ideals. And I was probably one of 14 months ago. But I'm not going to run with it. I'm not going to make it. And it didn't like my new gun. Fine. The door goes both ways. I've already lost a couple of buddies. I don't care. I feel more comfortable when I sleep at night.
wide tension on it. Good is coming out of people. People who have said enough is enough. I miss my son. But I am proud to be able to say he was my son. It is the state which naturally gets the death penalty. The state is wrong. And I do believe in the death penalty. I would like nothing more than to see you die.
can see him. I can just picture it in his eyes. The last thing he saw on this earth was the spotless light. Thank <laughs> you. 